My man Ken is an investor from San Francisco who's doing a burr deal in the Cleveland market. At least he's looking into doing a burr deal out of Cle in the Cleveland market, y'all. Uh, you sent me this deal, right? You're thinking about doing it. It's a $70,000 duplex. But, of course, before you drop 70 k and then do a big old reno, you want my take on whether or not you're going to make money, right? Because if you don't make money, why are you doing the bird deal? And that's exactly what I'm going to do for you, Ken. I'm going to go through this property uh, on a step-by-step -step basis, go through every little nook and cranny with you to make sure this deal is good and that you should move forward or to let you know, hey, man, I don't see it. Let's move out. Let's go. I am James Wise, and I am here to help you make money. I'm going to be running the numbers on a real deal. You want to be here. Yeah, we're going to go out of state, but of course, you know my team's going to take care of that. Let's check it out. Welcome to the show, y'all. I am James Wise, and I uh, have sold over $200 million dollars. Worth the properties just like this one, okay? So if you're trying to invest in Cleveland like my guy Ken, he's an out-of-state investor from San Francisco, I can help you do a lot. It starts here on this show. I make sure if this is a good deal, you get your money in. I represent you as your agent. But if it's a bad deal, I make sure you keep your money away, right? And I go through this, give you guys a little bit of the locale knowledge, right? Because a lot of deals... Uh, on the surface, right, especially when you're buying from halfway across the country, uh, could look like they're really, really good, really, really promising, right? You're in San Fran, right, San Francisco Bay Area. You don't have $70,000 duplexes down there in San Francisco, right? The address on this one, Ken, 7914 Halab, Cleveland, 44102, right? Priced at 70 k Now, ARV on this, 100, 110, right? 100, 110 or so, I'd say, okay? Uh, let's call it 110, honestly. It could really be 100 to 120. Uh, the market is kind of shifting and, you know, kind of coming down a little bit. But a as I say this to you, let's say about 110. Now, it's got to be lead certified, but we do have aluminum siding, so it won't be too horrible uh, to get that done, right? Uh, but as we cruise through this particular property, uh, I, I see some things that scare me, right? Just like normal stuff, like full cosmetic reno, okay, is going to need to take place, right? Like, I don't know how it's, like, coming off to you guys on the screen right now, like, especially if you're looking at this on your iPhone or whatever. Like, to me, as I stand here, right, this is, like, freaking, this is a 60-inch TV, 65-inch TV, so this is a pretty big-ass picture in front of my face, but you're looking at it on, like, a 3-inch screen. But, like, uh, you got to completely repaint everything. The floor is probably okay, uh, but you're definitely doing a complete repaint. I've seen a lot of peeling uh, paint everywhere, so we're going to have to go through quite a bit of paint touch-up using lead, uh, lead safe uh, building, lead safe building processes because we got to get this thing lead certified with the city of Cleveland. Okay, I see a lot of peeling paint here on these window frames. Okay, you got to patch this kind of stuff right there. So we're going to be doing a decent chunk of cosmetic work. We got to redo the kitchen, right? New countertop, new cabinet, Home Depot, Lowe's quality stuff. No biggie. Again, the floor's probably going to be okay, right? So cosmetically speaking, I would say we're probably somewhere in the ballpark cosmetically around $30,000 or so uh, to get this bad boy fixed up, right? But then, and it's hard to tell. So let me back up here. But then we run into this, okay? And this is going to be, like, hard to see on the screen. But this is, this is, this is fucked up. This is goofy. And honestly, uh, this, I would say, like, by itself would not be enough uh, for me to tell you, hey, don't do this bird deal. Uh, but because we're already so tight, right, I think this just kills your deal, to be honest with you, right? So, like, this property, they're listing it for $70,000, ARV. Anywhere between 100 and 120, to be honest with you, right? It's kind of hard, too, when you're doing bird deals, folks, uh, to really narrow down what that refry price is going to be, right? Like, uh, it's a lot easier for me to predict what a property will sell for versus what it will appraise for, right? Because guess what? When a property sells, 
uh, as far as the appraisal process goes, uh, it pretty much appraises for the price it's under contract for, right? Very rarely does a property sell for like 120, it's under contract for 120, and the appraiser comes in like 118, 120, 124, 126. It's usually going to be like right there, 120. Because in their brain, right, there's an arm's length buyer and seller who are like, yeah, 120 is what this is worth. And that weighs heavily on them. When you do a refi and you buy a property for much cheaper, you don't have that actual purchase price right there, that actual contract, that arm's length contract weighing in on their head. So it's more of a crapshoot, and that's where you run into appraisals where, like, the same property could be appraised by two appraisers and be, like, 20K off, right? Uh, so if we're doing this conservatively, right, like, we're calling it, like, about 110, right? I've already identified, like, 25, 30, you know, about 30, $30,000 or so uh, in, in work that needs to take place, okay, uh, to get this ready to rent, cosmetic, lead cert. We're about, like, 30K, right? So that already takes us up to 100K. And then I run into this. This is, <laughs> this is fucked up. Look at this bathroom. It, again, it might be hard to see on your phone, but, like, the plumbing fixtures have been – they built an additional platform in this bathroom to then put the plumbing fixtures on top of, right? And the only reason you would do that uh, is to to run all of, like, your plumbing fixtures inside of that little platform, right? Here's another shot of it, right? You see it? You see this big step up? So, like, you walk into your bathroom, and then you have to go up on this platform, which then houses the plumbing for your, your shower tub here, uh, the shitter, and the sink, right? Uh, that, folks is is not normal that's not how you do it right you see that that's messed up right and uh it's not necessarily like from a cosmetic standpoint like oh that looks stupid it's like dude what hillbilly half-ass crap was happening here uh where somebody didn't put the plumbing where it's supposed to be that they just like built up the flooring right like what this shows me right I could go over this and be like, yeah, you're probably looking at like 30K in reno based upon what I can see, right, from these photos, right? And that already pushes us to where it's like basically the most you could do the deal for, right? It's like 70 plus your 30, and then it's really worth 110. That's like your 10K in equity. But then we run into this, and what this is telling me is this property uh, has gone through ownership uh, where it's just been a complete hillbilly crapshoot, right? Like freaking, I don't know. I picture like meth heads with a meth lab in their freaking garage when I see shit like this. Like this is just completely ridiculous, right? So like what other corners were cut in this property? Like if I could see something like this egregious, like, oh, duh, I don't want to cut open the floor. Let's just build a platform. Like, dude, what other stupid things have been done? Uh, so because we're already so tight and the margin for error is already so small, the rest of it is just like normal Cleveland property stuff. Like the, the margin for error here is already so tiny. Uh, I, I think this property has a very good shot at, at just turning into like a never ending money pit, right? Like, you're never going to be able to uh, fully understand how much money it's going to take to fix fucked up stuff in this house ever until you're actually doing it, right? Because this is one of those scenarios where, like, you get, like, a bid to do X amount of work, and then you start doing X amount of work, and then during doing X amount of work, like, one wall gets uh, pulled out, and then now your contracting team discovers, like, 10 new things that are just completely ass-fucking-backwards, right? And then you start fixing that, and then you go down the rabbit hole just finding new things, right? When you see something is completely asinine is what I just saw in that bathroom. I could tell you, uh, with my experience doing turn around a million dollars worth of these deals, renovating thousands of houses, like <laughs> this one is just going to turn into a money pit. And I just think like any any price you're ever quoted to do any type of rehab is, is probably just going to continue to go up and up and up and up. There's just so many things in a 100-year-old house like this that are hidden behind walls that we don't know about, right? So... This one, to me, it doesn't seem like it'll ever turn into a moneymaker for you. I think this one will just be nothing but a money pit. So my advice to you is to pass on this deal. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.